you doing fabulous this Wednesday. Sorry I was so busy and exhausted yesterday. I did not get a chance to make a video. I had too much going on. But I want to read this to you guys. This book, it's called Enough is Enough. It's a call to Christian involvement. This book was written in 2000. And this book I bought a long time ago. And since moving and everything else, um, I got it. The Lord got me in this book. And I'm telling you guys, this book is amazing. Let me read you this part. This was a quote that evangelist Charles Finney said, and his lifespan was 1792 to 1875. He said, the church must take right grounds in regards to politics. The time has come for Christians to vote for honest men and take consistent ground in politics or the Lord will curse them. Guys, that is amazing. And that definitely applies to us today. But what the Lord wanted me to, um, to bring to you guys today is to talk about Nehemiah. And I've been on this for a while, and I just haven't been released to, to talk about this yet. But here, this is what he said um, in his book. He said, Nehemiah is one of the most gripping, encouraging books in all the Bible. He said, um, I would encourage every pastor in America to to spend time with Nehemiah. He said in 93, while entrenched in a battle to reestablish a moral foundation in the city where I am pastoring, he said, God led me to preach on a series of messages from the book of Nehemiah. He said, there is no uh, contemporary book on the market today. Now, granted, this was in 2000. There might be today. Um, he said that uh, that presents a more compelling tale of leadership and its roles in society than in the 13, 13 chapter book. He said, the book opens with Nehemiah fasting and praying with a broken heart. Three ingredients indispensable ingredients to, in restoring a nation. I just think this is so awesome and timely for where we are right now for such a time as this. He said, okay, I'm going to say that part again. He said that Nehemiah started with prayer, fasting, and a broken heart. He said, these are ingredients in restoring a nation before the Lord of heaven. He said, early in the book of Nehemiah, we discovered him to be a devout man of prayer. He was a man of wisdom and he was a man of courage. He said, but he was, uh, but we soon discover he is equally a man of action. Woven throughout the book, God graphically illustrates the principles that that he will act if we will act. Guys, that's a, such an amazing point because when good people do nothing, evil prevails. So listen to this. Influence and power are gifts to be used. Nehemiah, who has a position of rank and importance in the palace of the king, realizes something many Christians in post-Christian America has forgotten. Position and influence are power. So wherever you are and whatever job you have, God has given you that influence for position and power for the kingdom of God. And always remember that. He said there are never... Uh, he said they are never granted to Christians for ego infl inf infl inflation, excuse me, personal gratification or self-exaltation among other Christians. He says neither are they granted so that a believer can validate the depth of his humility by never wil uh, wielding them. He said positions and influences achieve their highest purpose when a godly man or a godly woman, through a, he said, through honest means, achieve them while recognizing God's sovereign sovereignty in his actions, okay, to make him successful. He said, um, the obscure bold prayer of Jabez recorded in First Chron uh, Chronicles 4 and 9 has long impressed me. He says, Jabez, this is the prayer of Jabez. He said, Jabez called on the Lord, said, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not grieve you. That was the King James Version. He said, Jabez's prayer prayed for money, power, and influence, which is what enlarged territory meant in his culture. He said, Jabez had it right, for he essentially prayed, Lord, don't remove your hand from me in this process. I know that's right. He said, Lord, understand in my spirit who it is that I is responsible for any success and I enjoy that I enjoy so that I might not grieve you by succumbing to pride. Oh yes, Lord. Okay. Now listen to this. Um, he said, Jabez understood that success often gave birth to self-sufficiency in those who achieve it. So he prayed for understanding. He said, I have heard some condemn this type of praying. He said, there are those that have fallen victim of extreme, uh, those that have fallen victim to this. He said, sorry guys, I'm rushing because I know I got to hurry and get ready to go for church. <clears throat> he said, um, who hold suspects, who hold 
and suspect any believer who achieves career success and the resulting material blessings that they may accompany that success. He said, I am much more interested with how God views this bold prayer. I know that's right. <laughs> than I am with the critics, what the critics have to say. He said, look at God's response. This is the response to Jabez's prayer. He said, so God granted him what he requested. He said, what a powerful affirmation. There is no doubt in my mind that many Perhaps thousands of people benefited from the bold prayer of Jabez, for he was more honorable than his brethren. Now listen to this. Nehemiah was a man of great position and influence in the, king, in the king's palace. He said he had a comfortable life and secure employment as the cupbearer of the king, at least as one, as no one else sought for position. Because what he did as the cupbearer, guys, he would taste any wine that would go, that would be presented to the king. He would taste it to make sure it wasn't poisoned. Okay, he said, um, yet he chose to risk falling into disfavor with the king and lose it all in order to save his beloved people, beloved Jerusalem, the city of God. When the king noted that his countenance was sad, a, rep a recipe for imprisonment or execution for a servant. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. He said, inquired, why are you so sorrowful? The king said, Nehemiah did two things. Number one, he took a, he breathed a silent prayer to the king of kings and he answered with, he answered aloud to the king of Persia, Nehemiah 2 and 4. He said, Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruin and its great and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Nehemiah 2 and 3. He said he had pro proceeded to request permission to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. He said, I am certain that anyone who heard this stood in awe of like, how dare this man do this before the king? He said, why would a pagan king grant such a request? Who does Nehemiah think he is to even make such a request? Look at Jerusalem. Its days of glory were all gone. The walls have been torn down. Because anytime God puts a call and a mandate on someone's life to go before the king or to go before the this world that we live in, to do anything, anything that God tells us to do, do not think the enemy won't rise up. He will. But... Like the word says, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. You go with courage and strength and wisdom, submit it to God and know that you have favor with man, but power with God. Hallelujah. He said, um, he said, the walls have been torn down and its people conquered and demoralized all but a remnant. Oh yes, Lord. He always has a remnant has been carried away into captivity. He said, besides others have been, have tried and fell Jerusalem was finished and Judah had fallen. Now listen, God was listening. He said, the scripture says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and he directs it like a water course wherever it should go. Oh, bless the Lord. That's Proverbs 21 and, and 1. He said, when Nehemiah recognized the king was open to him, he made a series of bold requests. Now listen to this. This was favor before the king and power with God. He said, let me grant... He said, let me return to the city and rebuild the walls. Grant me letters with the signet with your signature that you will assure me safe passages throughout the hostile territory. He said, and grant me letters that will instruct the keeper of your personal forest to give me adequate supplies of timber for the construction. And he said to the onlooker that it would appear that Nehemiah had incredible courage or guts. He said, but he had an incredible God. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Listen, he said, and because the gracious hand of the Lord was upon me, this is what Nehemiah said. He said, the king grants, granted my request. So I went to the governor's. He said, and gave them the king's letter. And the king had also sent an uh, sent army officials in Calvary with him. Nehemiah 2, 8, and 9. Oh, guys, listen to this. Um, I'm almost in this little, little part. He said, and there was no doubt that Nehemiah knew who was in charge. It was God. This was not the testimony of a man about a film documentary detailing of how he charmed the king to save a nation. His humility and dependence on God freed God to be himself. He said, not only did God grant Nehemiah's request, he said he granted far more than he requested. God led the king to provide an army to accompany and assist his servants. Oh, bless the Lord. God is so faithful. He's faithful. Where he guides us, he provides for what he wants us to do. He said, hundreds of years later, the apostle Paul testifies in the, to the Ephesian church, uh, that is God 
that his God was a God of abundant provision. Now, this is what um, Apostle Paul said. He said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him to be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout the generation forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. He says, despite continuous opposition, both from within his own ranks and from the enemies, the enemies of God, Nehemiah, with single-hearted devotion pursued his calling to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and to restore the nation of Judah. He endured personal attacks raging from slander to false accusations to plots on his own life. The book of Nehemiah is a is a classic study on what the man of God can expect when he enters the public arena where Satan's dominion is strong. He said it is not an arena for for uh for the week, he said, but we must never forget that our God is an awesome God who responds to those who seek to honor him first. Okay, to honor God. Nehemiah was a man who stood up to be counted because he decided enough is enough. Oh, guys, I don't know if this stirs you, but I know my heart is so stirred. Bless the Lord. And guys, I'm not going to get into politi uh, politics and all this stuff, but I just want to tell you this. Vote, vote righteously before God. The ones that are out there, the candidates that are out there, not every one of them have every single thing exactly. We are voting. We are voting for a president. We're not voting for a preacher, but we are voting for someone that's going to say enough is enough. We are voting for someone that is going to stand up for the right things of God. We are voting for someone that is not going to be weak need and back down, but they are going to do what they say and say what they mean. And they are going to let their yes be yes and their no be no in Jesus name. So guys, I just want to pray for our land. I want to pray for our nation. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus over this land, over this nation, over this world, and over these states, over the communities, Lord, in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus, and I place a hedge of protection over our nation. And God, I pray for those that are running for the presidency right now. God, I pray that you would touch them. God, that they would hear the voice of God. I pray you would touch them with conviction. God, I pray, Lord, like Lord, that we would be like the ne Nehemiahs of this day, that we would pray and fast and be brokenhearted before you. God, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear, hear from heaven and heal their land. So Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that anyone listening to this, some of the sound of my voice, that you would get a burden for this nation, that you would get a burden for our land, that you would get a burden for America, the home of the brave. Oh, bless the Lord. Those that have sacrificed for this nation, it wasn't in vain. This nation was built on godly principles and we need to stand up for what is right. We need to let our voice be heard and we need to not be silent in Jesus' name. So I am calling all those that will listen to this, this video that you rise up and say enough is enough. We are not going to be silent. We are going to let our voice be heard. We are going to pray and fast and seek the face of God. We are going to repent and turn from our wicked ways and God said he would heal our land and he is going to bring a revival and I believe it's going to be a revival of true repentance, a revival that's going to bring us to our knees, a revival where the Holy Spirit can move freely in this land and in his churches in Jesus name. And Lord, I thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome in the White House. You are welcome in the legislature. You are welcome over our communities and churches and lands and homes and schools. You are welcome because we invite you, Holy Spirit. Show up and show out. Stretch out your right arm of power and authority, Lord, and be seen and be heard through through your children, Lord Jesus, let the voice of God rise up through consecrated, broken, humble vessels in this land. God, you have a remnant and you've always had a remnant. And I thank you and I praise you for what you're doing. Oh, I bless you and I honor you, Lord, right now. You are an incredible God. Lord, you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, let your will be done. Lord, your will be done. Oh, God, your will be done in this land, in this nation, in this world, in our regions, our communities, our towns, God, in our homes, our marriages, our children, our finances, God, our health. God, let your will be done. Oh, bless the Lord. Let your will be done. Oh, Lord Jesus, let your will be done. I thank you and I praise you. You are worthy to be praised, God. And I thank you that only you, it's not a donkey and it's not an elephant. It's the Lamb of God that is going to
to bring a change to this land and this nation. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. You be blessed. Set your eyes to Zion. Oh, he is calling us to a higher place of praise. He is calling us to look to him and not look to the things of this world, but be sold out to him, especially in this day and age that we live. We need a move of God. And it's going to come through repentance. It is going to come through us denying ourselves. Like he said, if my people who are called by my name rise up and be counted, brothers and sisters in Christ, in Jesus' name, I love you. Jesus loves you. And it is our time to rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon us in Jesus' name. Amen.